Incredible edibles start with Loran. Professional bakery emulsions, super strength flavors, and candy mixes from Loran make it easier than ever to create your own delicious edible experience. Bite Me listeners in the contiguous 48 receive 15% off their order at loranoils.com. Just enter Bite Me 15 at checkout. For listeners outside the 48, email customer care at loranoils.com for a list of distributors and retailers near you and tell them Marge sent you. And welcome back, my friends, to episode 239, and we are doing Steve's Olive Oil Cookies. Welcome to Bite Me, the show about edibles, where I help you take control of your high life. I'm your host and certified Ganger Marge, and I love helping cooks make safe and effective edibles at home. I'm so glad you're here, and thank you for joining me today. Well, friends, it feels like it's been a minute because I don't know if you all noticed, I missed a week a couple weeks ago. I was in the midst of moving. I guess I had moved and all my things were in boxes and I was still trying to set up the office and I was feeling super overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. I have to admit that I didn't have any episodes in the bank as I often like to do. And I do that as much as possible, but that was not the case during that particular period of the month. And alas, I missed a week and I was a little, well, I didn't want to pile on myself too much because I'd just gone through a major life transition. And if you're watching the video of this, which you can find in the show notes over at bitemepodcast.com, do know that the video is raw and unedited, so you see all kinds of other shit that, or hear other kinds of shit that you wouldn't otherwise in this beautifully edited episode you're listening to now. But behind me, you can probably see the computer at which my dad likes to work. And there's a few other interesting things, because yes, I moved back home with my dad for a while, just while I figure out what the fuck I'm going to do next. And I'll probably be here for at least a year, I think apartments where I am are so damn expensive and it's insanity really that I'm unwilling to pay that price. And frankly, there's a few advantages to being here. One, I haven't spent this much time with my father in a very long time. And my mother passed away seven years ago. And my dad at the ripe age of 92, who looked me in the eye when I first moved in and said, you know, you're not coming here to look after me, right? Bless his heart. And he's really made the transition into coming home really seamless. He just pretty much keeps doing what he normally does and hasn't changed his routine at all, which suits me just fine because we're coexisting quite beautifully. And I really think he likes to have the company. Now, he does have friends over very regularly to play pool at the house, but this must be the evenings where he's been... I wouldn't say struggling. My dad doesn't struggle, but where it must get lonely sometimes. My mom passed away seven years ago. And I remember him telling me once that he feels like a pea in a pumpkin just rattling around in this house. And I do think he likes to have the company. And frankly, I realize, you know, at 92, even though he's in great health, he always says he's slowing down a lot as one might at the age of 92, but he's still driving. He's out of the house right now doing God knows what. He's doing the crossword puzzles every day, though he complains that he doesn't often know the names of people when they use those in a lot of the crosswords because he's not really up on the whole pop culture thing. And, you know, he likes his shows. Sadly, he likes to watch a lot of Fox and I have a hard time listening to some of that stuff, mainly because I don't watch that much TV anyway. But and he has his shows he likes to watch on the computer. But it's also interesting to note some of the quirks that he's developed over the years and some of the things he's willing to put up with. But in any case, it's been pretty nice being back here because I'm out in the country. There's a huge lot here and I will be growing some cannabis this summer. And I've been growing cannabis at my dad's house for a few years, but of course, because I didn't want to burden him with it. I was always just like, I'm going to put some plants out here because I could grow for my house, my old house, which didn't have ideal growing conditions, to be honest, but I would do it anyway because I enjoyed it. And then I would put four out here because he had tons of space and lots of sunny areas in which to put the plants. But I never expected him to water them or really look after them. When I came out, I would sort of, you know, look after them and, and do what I could. But 
this year will be different because I'll be here to look after them and to take care of them. So that really makes a big difference. So I think it'll be fun. And I'm probably going to put in a few vegetables as well, because my parents always had vegetables from as from always. And my dad did take out the gardens, uh, the vegetable gardens at his house a couple years ago. He's been slowly taking out all the flower beds and vegetable gardens because he's finding the upkeep to be too much. But that's one thing that I can do is maybe grow a few vegetables because I have noticed that his eating habits also aren't that great. And that's one of the things that I'm very happy to do for him is to cook some pretty nourishing meals. (sighs) He's always pulling out these like hungry man dinners and frozen meals and stuff being like, do you want some of this? I'll be like, no, dad, I'll cook. But in any case, if you haven't talked to a parent in a while, give them a call because you never know. You never know when that might be the last time that you see them. And this is sort of a real precious time to me. So in the midst of a lot of turmoil and transition, it's been sort of nice. So that's sort of what's going on there. I also have news that I'm going to be headed to Germany as well. So funnily enough, as I have landed on my feet here for the next, uh, that I've been here for a few weeks now, um, I'm going to be going to Germany for about a month to six weeks. And I'm kind of sad to leave my dad. It's kind of funny, but uh, my my kids have assured me that they'll come out and visit him on a regular basis and also to water the house plants that I brought with me. So hopefully they won't die. On another note, if you hear a clock chiming in the background, my dad has, has a grandfather clock and it rings every quarter hour. It chimes and I got, have, I've gotten used to it a little bit, but it's also means that the quietude is often disrupted by the chiming of a grandfather clock which isn't always ideal for recording. And I've done my best to sort of shut the door so that hopefully it won't be heard, but you never know. He also has a landline. And interestingly, when my daughter had the restaurant, she had a landline, an old rotary dial phone, and I brought it with me when she closed the business. And I plugged it in here because there was actually a landline you could plug the thing into, like... It takes me back to my teenage years for sure. But more than once, the ringing of that phone has scared the shit out of me. So I'm really hoping the phone doesn't ring while I'm recording this. But I guess that's what editing is for. That was a lot of information for you guys to take in. And before we get into this week's episode, I am going to, of course, pull out the cards for the stoner trivia. I'm randomly picking a card from the deck. Thank you to Wayne, who sent me these cards. And today's question is a knowledge question worth 40 points if you're keeping track. This new social media site is devoted entirely to marijuana. Weed tube, weed nation, pot tube, pot nation. I have to admit, I am unfamiliar with all of these, but maybe I'll need to check those out because it sounds interesting And of course, depending on when this deck of cards was printed, who knows if it's still around or not. It says 2019 on the back of the deck. So maybe when I have a chance, I'll have to look to see if this uh, social media site still exists. Because I think as we've all seen, social media sites are really hard to start up and get traction. Let's get into the episode, or not the episode, let's get into the recipe. Because I have to admit, these cookies, I made a batch before I moved out of the old house because I wanted to try them. Some Steve sent this recipe to me. Steve, hello, thank you for this. I have gotten around to making it because he sent it to me, what's the date on this? A couple of months ago, a few months ago now. Steve is a longtime listener. It's a dairy-free recipe, depending on the chocolate chip. So if there are listeners out there who like dairy-free alternatives, this is a really good one. And it's not that hard to find. I look for vegan chocolate chips, and they're not that difficult to find. Sometimes a little more expensive, but if you're looking for dairy-free, then all you need to do is swap in the dairy-free chocolate chips. And these were pretty simple to make. I like that you use olive oil. And I have to admit, these cookies really helped me get through a difficult time because I was leaving the house and there was a lot of stuff going on as I was just talking about earlier in the episode. And, you know, 
every night I would eat actually half of one of these cookies until they were all gone because I made them uh, way too strong for what I would normally tolerate. But it, they were like a warm hug each evening and I would drift off to sleep with a smile on my face. So for that reason, the fact that they're dairy-free, that they use olive oil and that they're delicious as well doesn't hurt. And this is where, so this is what you're going to need for this recipe. Pretty basic uh, ingredients. You need olive oil and it's a ratio of infused to your preference. Now I meant it calls for seven. This one is in gram. This recipe was written in, in grams for some of these ingredients. So you're going to need you're going to want your kitchen scale if you have it. And that's why kitchen scale is invaluable. It's a tool that I use on a regular basis, but you need 75 grams of olive oil, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough. And I used all infused olive oil. And then I ended up making cookies that were like hundred milligrams, which is way higher than my typical, my typical tolerance. Now, of course the actual, I estimated this, I used a tea check to uh, figure out how potent the olive oil was. And I don't know why I didn't just work backwards and figure out, you know, if I have, if I end up with this many cookies, then I'm going to have, uh, this, this is how potent they're going to be, but I didn't bother doing that. Why? I don't know. Maybe I was distracted by some other shit happening, but what ended up happening was that they were about hundred milligrams. Like I said, so I was eating half a cookie every night. Now, were they exactly hundred milligrams? Maybe not. That might be a little high as far as the actual potency, but needless to say, I got pretty high off half a cookie each night and it was thoroughly enjoyable, but you're also going to need brown sugar, granulated sugar, turbinado sugar, which unsurprisingly I happen to have in my cupboard because when I moved, I realized that I had like, it felt like 15 varieties of flour and another six varieties of different types of sugar. And I happen to have this one. They call the raw sugar in here. If I recall, it's a pretty chunky sugar, but you're also going to need an egg at room temperature, salt, espresso powder. I ended up just, I think I just used ground coffee. I do. Yeah, that's all I ended up doing. All purpose flour, baking soda, and of course your chocolate chips. And again, you can do vegan chocolate chips. Steve used a mixture of milk and dark chocolate for this, but of course it's up to you because you are in control of your high life. And that's the beautiful thing about making your own edibles is that you can do whatever the hell you want. You are in control. And that's why I love making my own edibles. Now he says he got eight cookies out of this. I got a lot more. I must have made my cookies quite a bit smaller. And basically these cookies are delicious. It's a classic chocolate chip that you're going to use with olive oil. And they were really nice. And you make them the way you'd make any other cookie. You're going to line your, your, your cookie sheet with some parchment paper. And you're going to whisk together the olive oil and the sugars and the egg and then you're going to add your salt, espresso powder, and other dry ingredients. You mix them all together. And it does say that the oil or the dough will seem a little oily and it may take a while to work together. That's true. It did, but it was, it wasn't that bad. It didn't seem particularly more oily than other cookie mixes that I've done. And at the end, of course, you're going to add in your chocolate chips to incorporate, and then you're going to put them out on your pan and bake them for about uh, 16 to 17 minutes. I'm trying to remember, I made these a little while ago, and I'm trying to remember if I had to put them in for a little longer, because obviously your oven times and temperatures may vary, so you'll have to just keep an eye on it. You're going to allow them, you remove them from the oven and tap the baking sheet briefly on the counter to deflate the cookies slightly. If you'd like them perfectly round, use a cookie cutter. I didn't do that. I wasn't too worried about that. I couldn't even tell you where my cookie cutters are right now because once I moved all my stuff, I pretty much kept half my kitchen stuff in storage just because I didn't really need it. Some of the stuff I pulled out that I knew my, my dad didn't have in stock, but... You let them cool and then enjoy. And these are probably something you could also freeze if you're not going to be able to eat them up too quickly, or if you want to have them in, have them on hand so you can gift them to other people as well, because these make a really nice gift. So that's basically it. These are the cookies that kept me, 
kept me sane over the last little bit. So thank you for sending me the recipe, Steve. It came at a time where you couldn't have known that they would have such an impact. This stuff up that I forgot to give you the answer to the trivia question. So I'm inserting it here because I recorded this after I recorded the whole episode. The new, this new social media site is devoted to entirely marijuana. Weed tube, weed nation, pot tube, or pot nation. Maybe you are a member of one of these. Or maybe you're not. The answer is weed tube. And I'm going to look that up after I get off of this recording and include it in the show notes if it does still exist. But of course, why not consider joining the Bite Me Cannabis Club? I think that's it for this week, my friends. So I encourage you to try these ones. They were delicious. And of course, if you know someone else who might also like an uh, olive oil cookie recipe, a classic olive oil cookie recipe, because they're like classic chocolate chip cookies, share this episode with them. And because nothing says I care, then DIY edibles. Please talk to me if you want to send me your recipes or something you've tried that you really found that you enjoyed quite a bit send away. I can't guarantee when or if I'll get around to making them because you never know. That's just the nature of the game and what's happening in my life because I do try and plan out recipes and episodes ahead of time. And so I sort of have a production schedule, if you will. But by all means, I love to hear your feedback. So you can always email me, message the podcast hotline, Uh, You can DM me on Instagram, join the Bite Me Cannabis Club. Those are all places that you can reach me. And if you're looking for links to any of those, you'll find them at the show notes. Just scroll to the bottom. I always have that stuff at the bottom of each episode webpage. And of course, you can stay up to date with the newsletter that I send by email. And when you do that, you can get access to the Bite Me Cannabis Cookbook that I made a little while ago. Of course... You know what else helps you through transitions? The products and services on the Marge Recommends page. If you're wanting to level up your edibles game or you're looking for some of the products and services that I use on a regular basis, many of which I've been using long before the podcast started, using the links there provides a small kickback to me at no extra charge to you, and it really does help keep the show going, keep it running. And until next time, my friends, I'm your host, Marge. You know what to do. Stay high.